I just found out why my boyfriend never holds my toddler niece. I, 27 female, have been with my boyfriend J, 28 male, for five years. We've both been very close with each other's families and we've even talked about marriage. However, one touchy subject is children. Whenever we discuss it, he gets kind of standoffish. He doesn't really dismiss the idea, though. It's just that he doesn't seem invested. I've always wanted kids and he just always says he's fine with whatever makes me happy. Ever since, I've been content with this situation. However, things escalated during this holiday season. Our setup has always been that Jay spends Christmas Eve and dinner with my family. Then I spend Christmas Day with his family. This was the first Christmas I'll spend with my first and only niece, Anna. She is two years old. She spent her first Christmas in the hospital due to her health condition but she's okay now. So I made sure to spend a lot of time with her. We played a lot, we opened gifts together, and I even re reenacted Anna's favorite storybook using her favorite doll. We even had matching outfits. My sister Amy, 30 female, thanked me for giving her and her husband summer leave from childcare the entire day. However, Amy also said she noticed that Jay, who was just either sitting on the couch watching me or helping my mom with the dishes, was kinda distant with Anna. I told her I've also noticed that before, and I just chucked it up to maybe Jay was hesitant and awkward to play with Anna because he feels he's just my boyfriend. Then Amy said she won't mind since she and her husband already treat Jay as part of our family. I then went back to Jane and encouraged him to play with Anna and help us set up her new dollhouse. But he said he's not feeling too well. He ended up drinking a few more beers and stayed on the porch by himself scrolling on his phone. I didn't press harder and thought he might really just be feeling under the weather. I just want to add for context that Jay isn't an alcoholic. He's a sweet, wonderful, funny man who's sometimes broody and deep in thought. But he's never abusive, manipulative, or moody. And he only drinks on special occasions. The next day, on Christmas Day, we had lunch with Jay's family. Afterward, I volunteered for cleanup to help Jay's mom Mary and brother John. Jay's family was the best any significant other could ever ask for. They're very sweet and supportive of us, but they're never prying. They always check up on us, but they never overstep. So as we were cleaning up, Mary asked me how my sister's baby was. They helped with the bills when Anna was hospitalized last year. I told them that Anna's in great condition now and that she already spent the Christmas at home. They were very delighted upon hearing this. Then I shared with them the thing I noticed about Jay. Initially, I thought maybe Mary could just give me advice on how to approach the issue with Jay since he's clearly not the playing with kids kind of guy. But then John casually said something like, oh, because of Rosie. Then Mary quickly shushed him. Rosie was the daughter of Jay and John's eldest sister, Beth. I never knew the actual details because everyone was very secretive about it. But all I knew was that Rosie passed away when she was just three years old and Beth and her husband moved away afterward. I never met them in person. So later, that night, when Mary, John, and the other family members got a bit more drunk, and Jay was already sleeping in the bedroom, they told me the story. I didn't force them or anything. Apparently, Jay being the youngest of the siblings, was really close with Rosie back then. Jay was just around 14 years old when Rosie was born, so he became the super fun uncle like I am now with Anna. He was actually Rosie's best friend. Then on summer of 2012, Jay was playing with Rosie outside. He was blowing bubbles and she was chasing and popping them. When a speeding car, driven by a woman who was distracted on her phone, skidded into the yard toward Rosie's direction. Jay reacted quickly and was able to reach and grab Rosie so the car actually hit him but the impact of the crash caused Rosie's head to whiplash as Jay hugged her. Jay was in a coma for three days and had multiple severe injuries and internal bleeding but Rosie didn't make it. Everything was caught by the neighbor's CCTV so everyone knew that. Jay was a hero for trying to protect Rosie. It was even covered by the local news. But Beth, who was understandably in grief, resented Jay for not being able to save her daughter. Beth and her husband then decided to move to another country to cope with their grief and start a new life, and they've had minimal contact with the family ever since. Jay, meanwhile, took the loss really hard. He blamed himself for not being able to save Rosie and not being able to attend her funeral since he was still at the hospital at that time. Mary said that Jay was never the same after that. Never went near kids. He became a lot colder, quieter, more reserved, and antisocial. He also had anger issues. But it thankfully went away. I haven't had any issues with this. We also live in an area where people don't really believe in therapy. So Jay never received professional help. After learning all of this, I bawled my eyes out because I never knew Jay was carrying such a heavy burden. 
The whole incident became a taboo family secret that no one mentions in fear of Jade breaking down of doing something he might regret, although to be fair, he's never had violent or self-harm tendencies ever since, so this was just a precaution. They also never told me before because they assumed Jay would be the one to tell me. But I told them that he never did, and that I never really asked him. I then thanked everyone for letting me in on this, and I told them that I talked to Jay about it when the time is right. They understood it, and they said I could just ring them up if I need help or support in any way. For now, I just want Jay to enjoy the holidays and his remaining vacation days from work. Now, I don't really know how to start with him. I know seeking professional help to process all the trauma and grief, even if it's been over a decade ago, would be the top priority, but I don't know how to bring it up to him. I don't even know when is the right time to bring it up. I just want him to know that I love him no matter what, and that I'll support him in every step toward his healing, especially if we're to form a family of our own.